discuss some more about how to subset uh, what is in a data frame because data frames are so important. They have so much information in them uh, that there are even R packages that are devoted entirely to working with data frames. So we should keep talking about these. Um, uh, so uh, one thing about data frames that can get rather annoying real quick is this dollar sign notation, which the dollar sign notation is okay. It's, it's nice that it's there. But the thing though is when you're working with a lot of the variables from a data frame or, or, or even just needing to refer to or to variables in the data frame repeatedly, uh, it, it could become a problem. So there's actually a function called with and the with function is able to help clean up the notation a little bit because it's assumed that, uh, so you have the first argument passed to the with function and that is the data frame. With also works with uh, lists as well. Um, so you pass it the data frame first and after that your second argument is whatever you want to do. So for instance, in this case, uh, I ask for uh, I'm working with the MPG variable in this uh, subset of the empty cars data set, and I'm creating a Boolean that checks whether uh, MPG is greater than the uh, first quartile and less than the third quartile. So I'm getting the subset of rows in the MPG data set that are between the two quartiles. Okay, so um, in fact, we can run this code. This is just creating a subset of the empty cars data set. And here is actually the uh, same operation, but we're using dollar signs all over the place. And not only are the dollar signs difficult to read, difficult to, um, th like they make the code uglier in a way. Uh, it's also harder to maintain because if you decided that you wanted to change what data frame was actually being used, you would have to change every instance in this first row of uh, D, every single one, which, I mean, it's it's not like it's impossible, but it's more error prone. So using the with notation is more robust since if you need to change what data frame you're using, instead of changing every instance of D dollar in the, in the line, you would ha only have to change that single D and everything else will be fine. So for that reason, it's often preferable to use with since it does clean it up and makes it more robust, uh, makes it easier to maintain that code. Um, all right, so that's it. Often we don't want to work with everything that's in a data frame. A data frame is often pretty exhaustive in its contents we often are satisfied with, say, uh, a few rows of that data frame or uh, or um, a, a subset of the columns of the data frame. And thus that calls for uh, the need of... Uh, so that brings up the need of subsetting uh, uh, operations. And there is a function called subset that is able to do this. You have this subset function that comes with base R uh, that will do, in my opinion, most of the subsetting that you need to do with data frames. So uh, let's look again at this empty cars data set. Uh, here's empty cars, Here's a, here are the variables in the empty cars data set. So how does subset work? Uh, the first argument to subset is going to be the data frame that you're working with. Uh, the the select argument of subset will uh, decide what row or what columns you actually get to keep in the final result. And uh, uh, the subset parameter will decide what rows of the data frame are going to end up in the final result. And the rows that appear in the data frame do not have to be uh, the rows that appear in select. Um, or do not have to, like whatever rule you're using for subset, it doesn't have to involve exclusively the columns that uh, were picked using select. And one thing nice about the subset function is maybe you remember that we are not allowed to exclude columns 
from, uh, uh, from or maybe uh, we're not allowed to exclude named entries of lists or vectors or matrices or uh, or data frames using negative vector and then uh, and then a a, a a vector of a named a character vector containing names. Uh, well, you're actually permitted a more expressive notation for this select operator. So you're allowed to use, for example, the colon operator to select all columns between uh, column A and column B, and you refer to those columns by name. Or you are allowed to uh, pass column names as a vector. And I mean, you are always able to do that part, but the nice thing about the subset argument, though, is you don't have to put it in quotes. And it's not like quotes are completely... Imp it's not like we're asking too much to pe people's uh, names and quotes. But it is nice that we don't have to use them. It does make our life a little bit easier. Because we would like to just type in MPG rather than quote, MPG, unquote. That, that actually can get annoying sometimes. And you can even refer to the columns you want to exclude using uh, the negative sign and referring to those columns by name, which is really nice. So all of those things are now allowed when you're using this subset function. So this first call to the subset function is going to select the MPG and CYL or MPG and cylinder columns of the empty card data set and the rows that will appear in the resulting data set are going to be the rows where um, the MPG is is amongst the uh, 90th percentile of MPGs. Uh, next we have this uh, uh, subsetting operation where uh, we're choosing all columns between HP and QSEC. So let's uh, first get a sense of uh, what the empty cars data set looks like just raw. So uh, because I, I get to use this colon operator here and notice that I don't have to put quotes around it and that's quite nice. Uh, the colon here will mean that the resulting columns that are selected will be between HP and QSEC. So all of those columns will be picked by this subsetting operation. So those are the columns that are selected and subset will be where uh, MPG is not NA and where MPG is greater than the first quartile and less than the third quartile and the number of cylinders is uh, equal to eight. And notice that cylinders is not actually one of the columns that are, that's going to appear in the final result, but we are still allowed to refer to it uh, in our subsetting operation. All right, so there we go. That's the, that's the end result. Uh, we are allowed also to create um, we are allowed to create uh, vectors of these uh, columns, which again, we are always able to do, but we don't have to use quotes this time. And also, we can refer to the columns that we don't want to include using that uh, negative sign, which is very nice. Uh, and uh, the so that will select the columns. We're choosing everything except for DRAT, WT, and QSEC. Uh, the number, the rows that are selected, I guess that's the same as before. So here's the resulting uh, mate. So here's the resulting uh, data frame. And uh, so for the last one, like this, this last line is just showing what we would have to do if we weren't going to use empty cars. And this is both harder to read and harder to understand. And in addition to that, it's harder to maintain. And writing code that is easy to understand and easy to maintain so that you don't even have to write comments. Uh, that's 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 important. All right, so there's a lot of stuff that you can learn about working with data frames. Uh, the process of working with data sets and making sure that data sets are in the appropriate form and you're getting the appropriate uh, and you're getting appropriate entries in that data set that that all falls into the purview of data cleaning, which is a very important part of an analyst job. So getting familiar with how to work with data frames in an effective way, that's, that's certainly a valuable skill. All right, so that's it for this video, and I will see you 
in the next video where we're going to talk about applying uh, functions over a collection, which is similar to looping. Uh, we're basically talking about looping in the next video. All right, I'll see you there.